during the fifth year anniversary live stream for rise of kingdoms they announced a handful of updates that collectively will bring the largest changes to rise of kingdoms that we have ever seen before and it's not even close the changes that we're going to take a look at in this video are going to make rise of kingdoms feel like a brand new game it is going to feel effectively like rise of kingdoms 2 that i feel like i've been waiting for for probably like two years now i'm I'm so excited for everything that we're going to talk about in this video I'm going to sum up every single change that you need to know about as well as a new civilization that is rumored to be the Mayan civilization coming in 2024 so I'm going to go over everything in this video and yes we are going to be taking a look at some actual gameplay footage of the graphical enhancements coming to rise of kingdoms this was revealed officially by rise of kingdoms but I believe it was only shown during the anniversary celebration for the Chinese players and I only know about this footage because it was shared on Ihara's YouTube channel so I'm going to link to this video down below Ihara is a great source of information that comes first typically to the Chinese servers so huge shout out to them and I again I will link them down below please go ahead and subscribe to their channel but first what's going on guys cheers got my deathly hollows mug today also actually I have a big announcement for today's video my kingdom and Alliance is actually recruiting this this isn't something that happens very often at the end of our last kvk a few weeks ago we did get our fourth star and we didn't think that we would have room to recruit many more people but as it turns out there's a small handful of positions open in my kingdom right now for players that have two ideally three billion kill points also your account age is considered here of course and we are one big alliance kingdom we're typically a mid a seed kingdom we have eight season of conquest wins and i would love if a couple of you guys watching joined the kingdom and helped us fight for number nine if you are interested in joining kingdom 1568 you can reach out to either rk ta or mayhem and hopefully i will see you guys on the battlefield but without further ado let's just jump right into this what is rise of kingdoms 2.0 now they didn't actually call it this this is a term that i'm using to refer to this sort of group of changes that is coming to rise of kingdoms starting in this last quarter of 2023 so within the next three months we should be seeing some of these massive changes and they will continue on throughout what i assume to be the first half of 2024 if not maybe the entirety of 2024 but the biggest update is of course the graphical changes and you are looking at on the screen right here a sort of preliminary i guess you could call it maybe an alpha or a beta build this is more of a concept of what they are going for with rise of kingdoms moving forward you can see obviously the army in the center of these trees here and if we go ahead and we press play here you can see that the developer actually does zoom out uh and you can see the the player city what i assume to be a player's city right here on the map and the first thing that you're going to notice is that this feels or at least appears to be very similar to what we see in call of dragons and if you guys missed it i posted at this point it's probably a couple of months ago i think it back in august i made a video where i talked about you know some of the things that rise of kingdoms needs to steal from call of dragons and one of the biggest ones for me was the graphical engine the graphical upgrades that they did for call of dragons i've i've been dying to see what rise of kingdoms would look like in call of dragons engine and it looks like uh i might actually be getting my wish which is honestly mind-blowing if i'm being honest with you guys i did not expect a graphical enhancement for for rise of kingdoms i really didn't uh, i thought that you know the game is already massively successful it's been successful for five years why would they change it why would they do that they just spent all this time and money and effort releasing call of dragons they probably are making that as a standalone thing where if you want upgraded graphics if you want an upgraded engine you play that game and i never really expected them to to give rise of kingdoms that same treatment but i've been proven wrong it looks like they are actually going to do it and my mind is blown this looks gorgeous and you can see here that as it changes from you know daytime to sort of the dusk time you could see that the shadows they were elongated because the sun is setting and you could see over here this the beautiful waterfall uh with the river and the bridge this just looks so much better than than rise of kingdoms right now like the map here just looks amazing you can see obviously the mountains themselves over here are like a 3d 
terrain it's actually crazy now do I think that they're going to redesign the map from a terrain perspective no I don't think so I think that this is going to be more of a visual overhaul rather than you know adding ranged combat over you know a mountain range and things like that I don't think that they're going to implement the same sort of 3d terrain that they have in call of dragons I still think that it will functionally be sort of a flat map but it's just gonna look a million times better and honestly I'm okay with that okay I didn't I think that the 3d terrain in call of dragons is cool is it a game changer ah, I mean it makes sense in that game would it make sense in rise of kingdoms not really because it's mostly melee combat so I'm totally fine with the game staying sort of how it is just looking much better but what I want to know if I move my fat head over here like here you see like two different um sort of like uh, towers just in the middle of nowhere with some walls around it like what is this going to be what is this area section off for I think that and we're going to go over this later in the video but they are adding more events to the game and some of them are specific to the actual home kingdom map so there could be a lot of new things coming to the actual world map that is more than just a graphical enhancement but as we press play here you could see that it's going to change again from night to early morning and then back into daytime and again I love the lighting change the shadows change and it just looks so good guys and they zoom and they zoom all the way out here uh you could see off above my head actually over here um you could see that there is still some fog on the map and I think that this is sort of just like a, a little a sort of a test area where they can kind of see what it might be like to make rise of kingdoms look like this okay and once again um there's no three like the terrain the mountains are 3d but you can't like go up there right like you like you can in call of dragons there's no flying units in rise of kingdoms right so like th this is still functionally uh the same the map is functionally still a flat map but it just looks a million times better so a couple of things that i'm gonna read off of this other screen so i apologize for for that a couple things that they did mention confirmed are obviously the mountain designs being 3d improved textures and density of vegetation improved water surfaces and lighting which we saw a little bit earlier when they come over here to uh to the waterfall you could see just the light is shining and glistening off of the surface of the water and in call of dragons it looks amazing I imagine it will look very similar in this game they're also eventually going to be upgrading the commander and NPC graphics as well now they didn't specify on this I believe that what they meant by that was they were going to change how they look on the map I think they're going to change how barbarians look obviously they have to right um everything on the map and how you interact with the map will be upgraded which is amazing I think it will be really cool to actually be able to see what commanders people are using on the field without relying on just the little icon above their head right that's basically the only thing you can tell like yes you can really zoom all the way in and there's like this tiny like 10 pixel little sprite of cpo right and you could all oh, that cpo uh, but you it's really hard to tell and you definitely can't tell in a battle okay um so having them redesign the the, the way that your armies and commanders and npcs look out in the world is going to be amazing now will they do an actual redesign of the commanders on the commander page I doubt it right I think that you know obviously a lot of games in this genre have 3d commanders 3d heroes okay uh we see that with with things like uh, call of dragons of course but like land of empires as well um it, they look amazing in rise of kingdoms I think they look good enough I think that there is a specific art style that rise of kingdoms has that works really good in this sort Sort of like 2d two and a half d type of thing and i think they probably will not change anything here although i would love to see these as 3d models i think that the art style here is fine it doesn't really need to be upgraded it's good okay if all we do is get an upgrade like to this and it's so crazy right like if i just look at the map now after we were just looking at what we were looking at this looks horrible right like this is really showing its age you zoom in and the trees like that's that's the vegetation in rise of kingdoms right now you know what i mean like that that's the forest right that's the forest boys like oh oh that's an even bigger forest right there so i cannot wait for this world to be revamped and the mountains to actually look like mountains rather than like some like large polygon structure but yeah having your armies look much better is awesome they're also improving the ui that's the user interface and also how you interact with it which i think is going to be nice they've already sort of been tweaking that with the release of the pc version they're also going to be doing this same graphical enhancement to the Ark of Osiris map as well. And I imagine this will also be the case for KVK maps. It would be insane if they just 
didn't do it for kvk maps as well um they said that this these upgrades are going to be going to be happening in phases so it's going to start in this quarter of 2023 and go throughout the first half of 2024 i suspect and these are just my notes now um i suspect that it's going to look again very similar to call of dragons i think that they spend a lot of time and money building the graphics for call of dragons why not use it on rise of kingdoms right like why not give rise of kingdoms that facelift to make the game feel big and fresh and new and maybe they can actually draw back in a lot of older players who quit the game because you know for whatever reason if they come back and they see this and they're like oh my god rise of kingdoms looks amazing now I think that that's a really big draw right and I think that that's a big reason why I'm happy for this update is because a lot of times there's new updates to the game and you know there are some big updates that come around they release new civilizations which is really good for the game they release new commanders obviously they release you know holiday events and things like that but you know it's been sort of the same holiday events for four or five years now and you know a lot of these things aren't big enough to bring in bring in players that have quit right like releasing uh luce like those are amazing commanders that i'm happy about as a player but if i had quit rise of kingdom six months ago seeing luce come into the game it's not gonna bring me back it's just like oh another commander whatever right but this sorry this uh this is a massive upgrade and i think that this will definitely draw some older players back to the game at least to check it out at least to see how the game feels and plays and looks now especially if you quit a year two three years ago this is definitely going to entice a lot of players and what i'm excited for is as they progress through this update and then i would say they probably will um i i suspect that they will kind of cap this update off with the release of the new sieve right like we're gonna go through phases of the upgrades of the map they're first gonna do the vegetation then they're gonna do the water then they're gonna do whatever the case might be the mountains right and then at the very end of all these upgrades boom new civilization big draw for a lot of players they're going to come in they're going to see the new civ and then they're going to see that the game is completely upgraded and i think that that's going to be a huge moment for rise of kingdoms and i'm super excited about that on top of this they also announced that they are going to continue to work on and release more season of conquest stories right now we have i believe seven in the game i think they completely ditched march of the ages i don't know what ever happened to that we played it once it was garbage i think it was just so bad that they threw it out i i don't know but uh, yeah we have seven season of conquest stories that they've talked about and they said that they are working on multiple they said that they are releasing stories plural okay so we know that multiple more season conquest stories are coming in the next year or so and they are working on upgrading older kvk stories that were relatively popular they did that with i think heroic anthem they had the power up version right so yeah lots more coming for kvk enjoyers which is amazing but i also want to talk about the uh the new civilization that they sort of uh hinted at here and I think everyone is speculating this is the Mayans and I think that that is pretty much a slam dunk I I mean I can't really come up with a good um counter argument to that claim I think it's Mayans okay and honestly this is a Mayan commander known as Lady Six Sky from Civilization Six and if we compare this to this I think that's a slam dunk guys I think I mean come on it it I don't know I can't unsee it so maybe I'm biased but like to me those like that silhouette I mean I know she's holding a spear here and here there's not a spear but there is a spear here but like this is Pericles from Civ 6 and like this looks exactly I mean come on right like come on I, I I think it's it's pretty it's pretty close here okay so I don't think that it is unreasonable to assume that Lady Six guy would look similar in Civ 6 as she would in rise of kingdoms okay i think that they're gonna put their art design spin on things but i think realistically like that to me looks pretty slam dunk and uh, honestly i think this as the city hall is probably this okay now look i don't know that much about the ancient mayan civilization okay but like to me i don't know i think it's probably i think we're probably getting mayans guys i think we're probably getting mayans i have no argument against it i originally thought when we got um the ancient greece i thought we were getting persia next year okay because we saw in the cinematic with leonidas up against artemnesia for the release of the greeks uh, i thought that you know okay we're gonna maybe get persia next year because there were persian soldiers in the cinematic so like of course we're getting persia 
but I mean this just doesn't feel like Persia to me okay this feels like Mayan civilization and I'm all for it honestly I want to see more Mayans in the game because all we got is Pakal and I think Pakal is easily one of the most famous Mayan his historical commanders right but like we need more Mayans okay I think the art design here is fantastic Pakal looks so much different compared to everybody else right we have all these other commanders that are covered in you know metal they're covered in gold they're covered in like this shining armor right like it's just these these fancy shields and sparkles and like all this other stuff maybe not so much the Korean commanders I guess you know but a lot of them have chain mail it's just okay Leonidas is, is an exception as well but like this dude this dude is rocking like leopard skin okay really cool stuff here just this tribal feel he just looks unique right we have Moctezuma who's not Mayan but you know it's sort of a similar uh, type of of design there of course obviously more of a jungle Aztec sort of uh, a theme here okay um but he's the only other commander in the game that sort of looks similar to this I mean if you really look at it basically none of the commanders are wearing green we've got Zenobia got a little bit of green here but like I want to see more green I want to see more jungle warfare and the Mayans I think savage warriors rich history they deserve to be represented in rise of kingdoms let's move on with the rest of the rise of kingdoms 2.0 information here they also said that they're going to be overhauling older events and they used as an example the wall of arrows event the war of the ruins barbarian keeps out in the world and I think that it makes sense for them to revamp this because they're revamping the world right uh tempest clash and Soroli assault of all of these different game modes I think every single one of them desperately needs an upgrade except for Soroli assault I think Soroli assault is like look you face roll it you just DPS through the roof and you win okay it's super simple but I think it's fine the rest of these events I do think need a massive overhaul war of the ruins is like okay but it's really gimmicky March speed is obviously the most valuable thing Tempest clash is really boring in my mind it's very like rock paper scissors that's pretty much it a wall of arrows I thought was fine but we only got it like once or twice I don't remember it it really I uh, was only around for the launch of the ranged commanders I think so yeah and then of course barbarian keeps are basically irrelevant once you start getting legendary like gear like you never ever do this so yeah I think all this being overhauled is good of course they also said that they're releasing new game modes and content new events okay one of those is called Canyon Battle which is going to be sort of an Alliance versus Alliance game mode that focuses around the Canyon gameplay so you'll have to sort of take turns attacking and defending I guess the other Alliance that you're fighting against they showed this screenshot here in the uh, Chinese I guess anniversary video um, there is some amount of flag capturing that goes on so I'm not really sure what is going on here but you can see that it has its own shop so that's good maybe we'll get our hands on some nice goodies for this event when it comes around and more Alliance versus Alliance things I think it's going to be really cool I think that you will be going up against alliances of other kingdoms so it's kind of like cave like a little 1v1 kvk type of game mode which I think is nice um they also said that they're going to be adding kingdom wide bosses which to me is massive okay especially with this new open world that they're bringing having effectively world bosses is going to be amazing okay I think that there's an opportunity here for them to sort of revamp the way that we do guardians in rise of kingdoms uh I think like we do them just to get the runes now and that's pretty much it um I think if you look at games like uh, Grand Cross Age of Titans they do a really cool thing with like Binzies and also just bigger massive monsters where like you really do need multiple players to come in and take them down there's just no way to do it with just yourself and I think that that's cool I think more group events more you know do, things that require coordination in the home kingdom is cool uh just like these big massive fights I think are cool um and also like obviously if you look at call of dragons you know they don't have altars they have the the sort of the raids right with the giants and the bears and, and all this other stuff right and of course I don't think that they're going to be implementing the behemoth system in rise of kingdoms I don't expect we'll see that but I think having those types of raids for the uh the runes that drop or something uh, or some other you know thing would be cool if they replaced barbarian keeps maybe with these massive um you know pve world boss battles that happen every you know two days or something like that that i think that would be awesome so they did say that they are adding that which is epic i want it to be a really big epic fight they also confirmed fishing is coming to rise of kingdoms yes i never 
thought that I would say that, but they literally said specifically that they are implementing fishing in rise of kingdoms which i mean they're putting all this work in to make the water look beautiful i guess fishing is just the logical next step okay and i'm gonna be honest with you fishing in games like um legend of zelda or even like world of warcraft like these are pretty good get like they're relaxing activities realistically like you could fish and chill out and just vibe out you know um, i don't know how that would work in a top down like 3d two and a half d type of thing i don't know what the purpose of fishing would be in this game uh, or like you know would you be able to fish up materials for equipment or is this like an entirely other thing like what is what is what is fishing i don't know but yeah they announced fishing so there you go they also said that they're going to implement a roguelike game mode which to me is odd because we already have golden kingdom in rise of kingdoms and they've also already revamped golden kingdom in rise of kingdoms and that has been a hit or miss i think it's cool that they revamped it and i think that it makes it sort of it refreshes it there's new tactics tactics and new things to focus on i think it you know that yes the gameplay is a little bit more frustrating for me personally i used to be able to just steamroll through golden kingdom and like yes it would take 20 30 minutes but i knew i could guarantee win every single time with my strategy now it seems like there's a little bit more rng depending on what i get and the starting weapons and stuff like that so at the end of the day i'm happy that they changed it i'm happy that they've revamped it but the fact that they said they're adding a new roguelike game mode where you know they didn't say anything else besides that but we know what roguelikes are it's where you're progressing through stages of a dungeon and you're getting these new uh, equipment or weapon drops or whatever just like in golden kingdom where you get the the different blessings and all that stuff so i don't know how it's going to be different than golden kingdom but maybe you have to choose a class right like maybe you can uh play like as a traditional warrior or as a traditional rogue or a traditional mage or something like that i don't know um but it'll be cool to see how they actually implement that and then finally they also said that they are implementing uh improvements to your alliance and kingdom management so immigration improvements blacklist and other alliance management improvements like having um, being able to give titles from uh, as a different titled officer rather than needing to be like king or something like that um and also uh a hall of fame for kvk performance which i think is is really cool they actually talk about that here in this part of the video um basically i guess the top 20 players by performance i love that hermione's over here i just rewatched all the harry potter movies but anyway um i guess the top 20 players by performance um will be chosen and then you get to choose everyone in the kvk will be able to vote on the top three players that will go into the hall of fame so you'll be able to make a speech you'll be selected and then i guess you will be sort of uh, cemented as like these are the mvps of this kvk and i think that that's really cool right i think that um this will really separate those that are like super outstanding performers and nobody will forget about it right like you could say oh you know like yeah maybe i was lacking this kvk but last kvk I remember how how good i performed and then you know it is what it is if you're not tracking stats then who cares but now you'll be able to go out back and be like look i was mvp for this many kvks or this is how good i did and everybody else agreed with me like there's no debating it and i think that's cool and i think honoring players that really put it all on the line and really outperform themselves uh, or outdo themselves I think that's great and that is everything that i have written down about the upcoming changes to rise of kingdoms um i am most excited for the graphical change i think that this is going to completely change how we see and play rise of kingdoms forever it will feel like a new game even though you will continue to have uh you're not restarting right it's going to be the same game you know and love but it will just look and feel better now one thing that i guess i'll address here at the end of the video a lot of players are skeptical about the performance aka lag of the servers with this graphical enhancement and i gotta say guys um i don't think that the graphical like the lag of a server has more to do with the server and everything happening on it rather than the graphics of the game for example the graphics that are being displayed um if there's if there's lag being caused by the graphics that has more to do with your device than with you know the actual server like in call of dragons there's really i mean i've never seen or experienced any like massive lag spikes that make the game unplayable so i think that you know a graphical upgrade i don't think will cause an increase in lag but 
if you do play on a much older device then perhaps you will have um you know independently you will have a maybe slightly worse experience which does suck and i hope that you know perhaps they will retain the obviously the simplified graphics mode and maybe even dot mode i think a lot of players like dot mode because it is a lot easier to use and so hopefully they will be able to retain those features for players that use older devices or less powerful devices or for players that just prefer to play like that i would love to see that of course but i don't really think that this is going to be a massive problem especially if you're playing on pc which honestly if you're fighting in kvk um if you can afford a pc and you have a pc you should be playing on pc it's just the best way to play rise of kingdoms these days that's basically like the only way that i play in kvk like if we're fighting i'm not playing on my phone there's just too much that can go wrong it's just too the screen's too small you have to play on pc so yeah at the end of the day though um i'm not super worried about lag spikes um you know that's just me if you guys are worried about that let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you think about all these changes i think that this is easily my favorite announcement from rise of kingdoms i've never been more optimistic for the future of the game for rise of kingdoms than i feel right now and guys i've been playing this game since like the beginning i started playing in october of like what 2018 and the game was kind of launched in august september right i think there was like maybe a beta or early access or something like that so i've basically been here from the beginning there's only a handful of people that i know that have been playing longer than me i think chiskel and shinchi are two of them but yeah like i've been here pretty much from the beginning and this update is the best update that i have ever seen i am i am more optimistic for the game now than i have ever been strictly because of the amount of time and effort and investment that the team is doing into the game it's very rare that you see a mobile game five years old get a massive rehaul like this it's almost never that you see that okay so if this footage is if this is if this is how good rise of kingdoms is actually going to look afterwards this is the biggest upgrade we've ever seen to the game by a mile in my opinion the only thing that comes even close is the update where they gave us open field movement right you guys don't remember that but back in the day there was not open field movement you had to send your armies to nodes or points on the map and then manually adjust them to different points y'all don't remember that because that was a long time ago but that was obviously a big up upgrade and i think that the free movement is basically what catapulted rise of kingdoms to the number one uh, strategy city builder game in the world okay on mobile at least and i think that this update is almost as good or better than that update in terms of how hyped i feel and how optimistic i feel for the future of the game so i'm happy about this it was unexpected for me i'm stoked and i cannot wait to hear what you guys think about these updates in the comments section below are you guys happy to see all this stuff who do you think the new civilization is going to be i want to hear from you guys down there and with that being said guys while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it also another quick reminder that my alliance and kingdom 1568 are recruiting i went over all the requirements at the beginning of the video so if you missed that go ahead and check it out and reach out to rk mayhem or ta if you are interested consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace